Welcome once again. And now we are on John chapter 1, and I'm going to start at reading verse 4. And we're going to be talking about, does God create darkness? Does God create evil? So we're going to be talking about this. It's not going to be a super exhaustive teaching because there's so much stuff to say here. And I'm just going to break it up into different parts. But uh, let's get right into this. John chapter 1, verse 4. In him, that's speaking of Jesus, in Yeshua, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it. Okay, so Jesus is the light. Now we're going to read this later on where Jesus said, I am the light. And so the question is, if God is light, can he create darkness? Does he, how, why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there darkness in the world? I'm going to skip on over to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. God is speaking here. He says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I am Yahuwah who does all these things. Now, here again, the question is, does God create darkness? Well, it says very clearly here, he does. But isn't he light? How can light create darkness? Now, here's the thing. He is light, okay? But he, it says here in Isaiah chapter 45 that he forms the light. He, his form, he actually, his being is made of light. His form is the light. His being is the light, but he creates darkness. Well, how do you create darkness if you are the light? If you're in a room and you are a light, if you, if you, if, if you are a light, if you are a light in a room, how would you create darkness? Well, maybe you would just leave the room. This is what happens a lot. God leaves certain people. He leaves certain regions. He leaves certain nations. He leaves certain organizations. And in so doing, he creates darkness. Okay? Now, a lot of you, and this brings up another uh, whole thing, and I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here, but a lot of you say, well, how can God leave somewhere? He, isn't he everywhere? No, he's not. What well, says in Psalm 139, he's everywhere. We've got to take it in context. Psalm 139 is written by David, an anointed an anointed man of God, okay? He is the anointed one. He is He's David, okay? He said, if I go, you know, to hell, you will, you will be there. If I go to heaven, you will be there. If I go to the uttermost parts of the earth, you will be there. Why? Because he's got the anointing of God in him. The, the presence of God is one with him. He, he has it. Now, the presence of God is not one with everybody. Remember, Jesus said, Jesus said very specifically in, uh, in Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, he said, to his church, think about this, not to the world, but to his church. He said, I'm on the outside. I'm not in you. I'm on the outside. I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Open the door. Let me in. Okay? He's not everywhere. He's not in everybody's heart. He's in everybody's mind, perhaps, in a, to one degree or another. But that is not his person. That's just thoughts. That's just information. That's not his person. That's not his real presence, okay? He's on the outside of one of his churches in the book of Revelation, knocking, wanting to get in. Moses said to God, you know, don't send us anywhere unless your presence goes with us. So yes, it is possible uh, to be apart from his presence in this world. Actually, much of this world is apart from his presence, honestly. Okay, that's why Moses prayed passionately. You know, don't don't lead us anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere without your presence. I know some people they like to mince. They like to play with words, saying, "Well, it's not the real presence of God." He's talking about it's the manifest presence of God. That's not what it's talking about. That's not what it said. It's His presence. Okay, His presence. You know, some people might say Jesus said, "I'm I'm with you always." Like His presence is always there. 
well, you got to realize who he's talking to. He's talking to his believers in the first century. Okay. Can we claim it today? Well, some people can, but not everybody. <laughs> By far, not everybody can claim that uh, as, as, as fact. God creates darkness by leaving, okay, by pulling away, pulling away. Now it says he makes peace. Again, it says he makes peace, but he creates calamity. So yes, he is peace. He is shalom. He makes, it's part of his, it's what he's made out of, okay, peace, shalom. So why is there so many people and why is there so many places without peace? Well, because his presence is not there. His presence is not in everybody's life. His information, the data in your mind, in your, you know, in your brain, so to speak, can be there. But not real, the real, real, tangible presence of God. Not real presence of God. Your thoughts about God, your thoughts of God, but not God. Okay. Think of it this way as well. So God created everything material, okay, on the earth. In, you know, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, he created the world and the universe. Everything that we know of, everything that we see with our human eyes, he created, it says, okay? But it also says he created man in his image. It cre he created man in his image. He created man in his image. Now think about this. Anything that man creates with his hands has a beginning and has an end, okay? Anything that you create with your hands has a beginning and has an end. So there is nothing that you can create that's actually really eternal. With your hands, that is, okay? No, no work that you do with your hands is actually eternal. There's a beginning, there's an end to it. It's corruptible. Man is made in the image of God. So in the same way, everything God made, created, is corruptible. There's a beginning, there's an end. There's a time when it's new, there's a time when it's old. There's a time when it's fresh, there's a time when it's rotten. Think about that, okay? So everything God created is corruptible so he creates darkness. He creates calamity. So what he creates is not him. What he creates is apart from him. He is eternal. What comes out of his creation is not eternal. It's temporary. Okay? So God created darkness, but he forms light. It's his form. It's what makes him up. It's what makes up his being. In the same way, he said, I make peace. I, I consist of shalom, peace, you know. I make shalom. I am made up of shalom. However, I create calamity, okay? So in the same way that God creates things that are corruptible, and I guess you might call evil, in that same way, he creates darkness. He creates calamity. Why and how? Well, again, he removes his presence. He removes his blessing. He walks away. Why would he do that? Because you are not one with him. You know, somebody might say, isn't everybody one with God? Absolutely not. You can think of a lot of evil people that have existed. Are they one with God? Absolutely not. Most people would say no. They're not one with God. So everybody is not one with God. When you are not one with him, especially in your actions, because actions produce spiritual power, okay? Um, a lot of people in the spiritual, in spiritualism and witchcraft and this kind of stuff, they, they understand that. Your actions create spiritual, you know, can invite or, you know, uh, produce spiritual results, okay? In the same way, when you disobey God's law, because God's law is his word, which is of him, which is a reflection of his character. When you disobey God's law, you are withdrawing yourself from the very essence of God because you are not like God anymore. 
And the more you break his law, the more you are not like God. And the more you are not like God, the more God, it's just, it's almost like a science. If you're not like God, you are apart from God. You are pulling away from God. Instead of being one with him in all areas, you, well, you might be kind of connected to him in certain ways, but not in all areas. So that produces darkness. That produces calamity in your life. So you have to be obedient to God in order to have the peace, to have the, the light in your life, to have good in your life, because God is good. How is it that you can withdraw yourself from goodness? By disobeying, by not coming in line with his guidelines, his rules, and his law. Because his rules, his law, his guidelines are a reflection of who he is. Okay? As Paul said, the law of God is holy. Why? Because it's the word of God, which comes from God, because God is holy. God's holy. So that means everything he says is holy, which means the law is, is holy because that is his word, the law. Holy, just, God is just. Therefore, what he, what he says is just. And what he said was the law. He spoke the law, which means the law is just. God is perfect. Therefore, what he said is perfect. His word is perfect. What is his word? Well, we know at least part, if not all of his word, is the law. Okay? So what he spoke is good, just, and perfect. May I say this as well? God is eternal. What he spoke, his word is eternal. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? That's why Moses, when he met Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, he, didn't, he, he knew Jesus. It's not like, oh, wow, good to meet you. No, he knew Jesus from back in his day. Jesus, you know, it, it says in the, in the book of Acts that the church, there's only one church, there's only one God, there's only one Lord, there's only one faith, there's only one baptism. The church was in the wilderness with Moses, it says in the book of Acts. The ecclesia, the church, God is eternal, which means his word is eternal, which means his law is eternal. Okay? Which means if you get yourself in line with that law, then you get yourself in line with eternity. Eternal life. Understand? I know that goes against a lot of what you guys have been taught. But I'm telling you what the scriptures say. I'm not telling you what Billy Graham says. I'm telling you what scripture says. Okay? I hate to get into this this topic, but hey, you know Billy Graham said a lot of things. Like you know, you're you know, once you're the, you're part of the Church of God, you know, you're born again. You're you're part of His body now. You're part of the Church now. God doesn't see your sin. That's not true. The Book of Revelations, chapter uh, chapters two and chapter three, very very clear. Jesus speaks to His Church and says, "I see your sin. I know your works. You need to repent." over and over and over again. God sees it. He's not blind. He's not stupid. He's not a hypocrite. He doesn't want you to cover up what's really underneath. He wants you to deal with it. He wants to take away your sin. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. The light shines in the darkness, we read, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay? When... When you turn on the light, there's not a battle. You don't hear a battle going on. Darkness flees fast when you turn on the light. There's no contest. The same way with God. When God is really there, there's no contest. The darkness flees fast. So I encourage you to read the scriptures and make yourself one with it. You know, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because in them you think, you know, you have life, but they speak of me, okay? What kind of scriptures was he talking about? He was talking about Torah. He was talking about the prophets. He was talking about Psalms. He said that over and over again. Jesus was saying that the law is just a reflection of him. So if you want to know what Jesus would do, 
read the law of God. If you want to know what Jesus was like, read the Torah. It's all there. He's in every page. May God give you the power and the ability to understand what I'm talking about. And, and enlighten the eyes of your understanding. Give you great spiritual wisdom and knowledge as you seek these things out. And don't forget, check out the other teachings. In the name of Yeshua, may God bless you richly. Amen.